Good oh, morning. You need to take this hat off. It's killing my. There we go. Good morning from Koh Phangan in Thailand. Today is full moon party day. It is. We weren't actually originally going to do it just because we were actually thinking about doing the jungle party instead and then leaving because we know it gets. I didn't know that. We figured we come to Koh Phangan we're gonna do the full moon party and it's a lot cheaper as well it's 200 bar on the door to get into so yeah today is the full moon party in Koh Phangan as Callum just said we weren't sure if we were gonna do it but we've ended up here over the full moon weekend so it sort of just makes sense to experience it whilst we're gonna be here we're probably never gonna do it again so we might as well make the most of it this one time so this vlog is basically gonna be just a short vlog about what the full moon party is like in 2023 for anyone who doesn't know though the full moon party is a huge huge party on the beach in Koh Phangan. It's been around for several, several years. It's a huge event and it happens once a month on the full moon. So anyways, we are going to be doing a full sort of rundown of our experience personally with the full moon party. As Callum also said, it's only 200 baht to get into. So a lot cheaper than the 1000 baht jungle party, which is like 23 pounds, not really worth it for us. So we didn't actually go last night. But yeah, today is uh, a day in the life of two backpackers in Thailand land doing the full moon party in Koh Phangan so keep watching if you want to see how that goes enjoy so yesterday afternoon we actually ended up at one of the most beautiful restaurants on the beachfront I have ever seen in person. I actually found it on TikTok. There was quite a few people posting videos about this and it's called Ko Raham. I will insert the video over the top of us walking in, but it's basically a very boho chic. It's got like strings hanging everywhere. It's just wooden and there's hammocks. It's just a really, really good vibe. The restaurant was amazing. We actually ate lunch here yesterday and the food was delicious and it's actually not too badly priced as well I would have thought for a place like this it would be more expensive than it actually was but yeah not too bad at all also if you just walk through the restaurant and out the back there's actually this beach bar bit which we are sat at right now which is right on the waterfront and you can actually run and jump in off of the ledge into the water you can snorkel down there as well yeah stunning vibes just had to come back here this afternoon because it was just giving such good energy probably just chill out here for an hour or two and then go and find some lunch and then and get ready for tonight. Nice! From the boy who couldn't backflip a few months ago. Not bad. Oh yeah, going in with the Crocs. So years ago when I first started sort of researching into our trip, I remember watching a lot of videos in Koh Phangan and in Thailand and people mentioned about finding old traditional English pubs in Koh Phangan. Honestly, I hadn't really thought anything of it until we arrived here the other day. Right up just next to where our first hostel was on that first night is this English traditional pub called The Tavern. Honestly, I'm having a bit of a weird moment right now because I know I'm in Thailand, but it feels like I'm at home. It is a Sunday today as well and they do offer a Sunday roast but I've actually opted for a beef lasagna because I'm not normally a massive roast dinner kind of lover. Callum has also gone for a classic ham egg and chips which is a pub classic in England and if we were to have got the roast dinner you actually get a free pint with your dinner as well. The prices in here they're not horrific they are more expensive than I actually thought they might have been but then again it is a western English pub in the middle of Thailand so it's never going to be super cheap. I think the roast dinners were 350 to 450 baht depending on which meat so that's roughly nine or ten pounds beef lasagna is 300 baht and Callum's is 200 baht for the ham egg and chips honestly this is such a weird like out of body experience being in here it feels so strange they got the whole pub literally looking like an English pub at home <laughs> to literally having the football on the telly. There's a pool table in the corner. You've literally got the garden pub lunch benches outside as well. Mental, can't believe we found this. <laughs> oh my goodness, this looks divine. Stunning. That it really does look very English. Yeah. Beautiful. Oh. 
can't my, wait. Mostly, I my family. Well, no, any time we went for a pub, lunch slash dinner, always, no, no, always. Pie, egg and chips, ham, uh, ham, ham, egg and chips, chips yeah. <laughs> Me too, normally as well, but the lasagna was just calling my name. He also said garlic bread, which is a huge bonus for me. Delicious. A few moments later. Final thoughts on your English pub lunch of the day. I'll tell you what, I haven't had a pub lunch in a long time, even being at home. And uh, that was that was solid. That was good. So good. I am absolutely stuck. stuck to the brim. You know when you can't really catch your breath? I literally ate every last thing on that plate. Actually, we all did. We all demolished our food. 10 out of 10, that was absolutely delicious. Still doesn't have anything on my mum's lasagna. Mum, I know you're watching. Your lasagna's better, but it was so good. My new shirt, bought this in the market last night for 230 baht. Cute. <laughs> yes! Two hours later. By the time that we left arena and went to the full moon party it was probably already around 1 a.m the tickets to the full moon party normally cost around 200 baht on the door but we somehow walked through without realizing that we hadn't paid so i suppose that's good it was of course pretty busy on the beach but there was a lot of bars along the shoreline which were playing all sorts of different types of music there was also quite a few fire shows happening dotted around and there was a lot of photo spots to take pictures at too in total we probably only spent about an hour at the full moon party because honestly we were just tired and over it at this point but i can imagine if we got there a little bit earlier we would have been much more in the mood for it i believe the cost of the transport in total was around 400 bar i think we paid around 150 bar each to get from arena to the full moon party and then to get back to our hotel afterwards was around 250 bar each a good tip on this to know how much you should be paying is just ask your hotel or hostel what the best price you can get on the way back because it's always going to be more because it's later and everyone's obviously drunk but the hostels usually will give you an idea of how much you should be paying just so you don't get ripped off and that is the end of this Copanyang full moon party vlog. Obviously, as you saw in the clips, we didn't actually spend all that much time at the full moon party in the end. So I feel like I really bigged up this vlog as like a really informative, great vlog. And then we didn't really get much footage. So I do apologize for that. What was your final thoughts on the full moon party experience? The full moon party was good. I think we definitely should have gone there earlier. We had such a good time at Breeze that by that time we got to the full moon party, everyone was leaving and we were just kind of like, Oh, okay it is nothing really happening it was literally just a big party on the beach so don't get me wrong there was still a lot of people there even when we arrived at about one o'clock it was still very busy as you can imagine there's some people who go all night until you know the sun goes up the next morning but i just think for me personally i was sort of done by that point i was sort of getting tired and a bit grouchy and i wasn't very drunk anymore i'd sobered up and it's nothing to do with the full moon party it was just we did it wrong aside from the full moon as well Kopang yang is a stunning island it's so easy easy to get around and there's a lot there so even if you do get there um, and you do full moon and then you stay a little bit after where it does quieten down quite a bit just explore it a bit because it is actually really stunning and it's not just the full moon party there there's so much more there we actually ended up staying on Copenhagen for about five days was it about total I am really glad we did because it gave us enough time to experience the full moon experience the island drive around it's more time there than I thought we were gonna have and I'm really glad that we ended up with that much time and if you're going anywhere near sort of Koh Tao, Koh Panyang, Koh Samui, Koh anything near the full moon party, book your tickets in advance because we were not actually able to get our tickets to Koh Tao the following day. Actually, it wasn't even the following day. It was two days after the full moon because it was still booked up with people moving from Koh Panyang to Koh Tao. Yeah. So we had to then stay one more night there and then go the next day. And uh, all of the journeys are going to be very busy around that time. Everything is a little bit more expensive as well. So just be aware of that. But yeah, to conclude this vlog, I would say definitely experience the full moon party if you are ever going to Copenhagen for around that time it was definitely an experience worth doing Good I feel time. like we don't really have a fair opinion but we didn't love it personally we didn't love it go for yourself find out have fun
Anyways, I'm gonna leave this vlog here. Thank you so much if you have watched it this far. If you have enjoyed watching, then please make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe, and comment. A, there we go. <laughs> All of the above. Thank you once again for watching, and we really hope to see you in the next one, which is our Kotal vlog. Thanks for watching. Bye.